Hi everybody, Nick Miller here from miniquadclub.com and this is my review of the Quantum HD DIY FPV goggles from Hobby King, uh, also known as the Quantum V2s. Uh, just a little quick history lesson for those who are uh, just getting into the hobby. Last year Hobby King came with, out with a $30 kit that uh, basically was two pieces of styrofoam that could be uh, potentially glued to the bottom of a ball cap. Uh, I, uh, some, some lenses to magnify the screen and a simple screen and uh, you can see coming off the screen was a video in and a way to power the system. I actually powered mine off of a, a Fat Shark battery to try mine out. They work, they work perfectly. Uh, I believe it's 2S to 3S so uh, don't go over that. But, but this kit you know for $30 was a, a hell of a way to get into the, uh, the FPV uh, game without spending a lot of money. A lot of guys are just getting in and uh, don't have the money for a full-blown set of Fat Shark or Sky Zone goggles. And so this is a great way to, uh, you know, just put to dip your toe in the water and make sure it's for you. Uh, and then when you're ready to graduate to a, a set of goggles, it also makes a great tool for your passengers so they can come and you can bring some friends along and, and they can actually watch it and, and, uh, and get to enjoy the flights as well. Now enter the Quantum V2s. Um, you can see there's some definite differences uh, in the kit. Uh, so for starters, let me let me pull out the handy dandy instructions here that I didn't read um, because that's just not what we do. Uh, but uh, you can see there's you know um, some you know a top and bottom piece that comes with a lens frame, some of the actual lenses uh, which are already installed, some foam stripping, and the various cords you'll need. Um, it comes with also a five inch uh, TFT monitor, which is a heck of a lot better than the uh, one from the V1s. It also comes with the uh, goggle sleeve, which we're going to go over here, and that's really the most important part of of where this kit really innovates. Um, from the version one, and then it also comes with the video switcher. And so, those of you with Sky Zones, and here's here's the video switcher, um, right here. Um, for those of you with Sky Zones, you're probably used to having a front camera, so you can uh, switch between the view of the front camera and your FPV cam if you need to see your hands or find your radio, something like that. Well, this actually has a, um, a space, you know, advertised to um, to be able to switch and mount that. So you can actually mount the little video switcher here in this pocket, which even has a little hole for it. And then you can press a little button here, and the goal is, you know, to be able to mount a camera uh, on there on top, so you can actually um, be able to see what's in front of you. It also has a slot for a head tracking, they say, and it has a space for your receiver and a space for a battery. And uh, so you could fit, I fit uh, some 1300 mAh uh, 3S batteries right in here and plugged into right here. There's also a little pocket right here to allow the battery lead to come out of, so it's pretty convenient. And uh, you know, at the back of the monitor. Um, there's a couple controls, there's a menu key, a plus and a minus, and you can see how the cabling is all tidy underneath with these nice little loops they put in here so you can uh, tuck your cabling through. I actually had uh, these RCAs back through here. So uh, what I want to do real quick before I get into too much more, let's, let's actually I guess see what's in here too. So um, inside is a similar design of the two shells just like the v1 was um, a bigger lens with a smaller black surround one of the problems with the v1s as you can see is how big that black surround is and, and actually hold on let me let me show you um, what i mean so if i plug in these quantums here you can see already on screen one of the issues uh, is how big that black bezel is inside there so you're losing a lot of screen and if you're like me and most people who had to pull this thing almost all the way back to make it useful you can see how that's really disappointing as far as what you can see of that uh, the screen that's in there uh, there's a view of the actual screen and there's how much of it gets blocked top and bottom so a couple issues with the design on that uh, fast forward to the uh, newer version right here if I plug these in, not only can you see the, the large size of the monitor, but you can also see the smaller bezel and how much more picture that gives you. So that's a 5-inch screen, uh, which is pretty gigantic, uh, which on one hand is great, and on the other hand it is not so good. And let me, let me uh, get into that right now. So here is a pair of uh, Predator V2s from Fat Shark, and uh, if I light these up, First thing you're going to say if you haven't used Fat Sharks before is, wow, you know, how can you even see anything with such small screens? And I'm here to say that, you know, there's no possible way for me to show you on camera what these really look like. The best thing I can do is say that when you wear goggles like that with smaller screens, it's as if you're standing in a dark room staring at a, a small 
uh, projected screen. It's almost like having a floating TV screen in front of you. So they say that it's almost like having like a 50 inch TV 10 feet away from you, that kind of thing. So, um, but here's the challenge. So again, you would assume that the bigger field of view that these would provide because the, the screen is so much bigger would be more beneficial. But for me personally, uh, my eyes got really tired really fast from one trying to track uh, a little bit back and forth. There's a lot of surface area when you put your face inside here to look at. Five inch uh, screen is actually pretty big. And the other issue I had, which I know a lot of other reviewers had focused on, is that the screen itself, the, the distance between the end of, of this from back to front and, and where this adjustment sits, I had to, like pretty much everyone else, run this adjustment all the way to the back corner to, uh, to be able to get the magnification even close to being okay. And, uh, and realistically, um, one of the suggestions that I had read about online and, and seen other people recommend was to take this back screen and, and actually move it out and they actually hot glued it to the back of here um, so that it would seal itself up. And that extra um, distance that it gets from being installed on the outside was enough to help with the issue of being too close. But for me personally, uh, my eyes did not want to cooperate with these. Um, doesn't mean it's a bad product. I think it's a great product for those it works for. But for me personally, I, I couldn't... Uh, you know, I couldn't get them to, to my eyes to enjoy enjoy a, a long FPV session. That being said, uh, for those of you that have glasses, um, it's a real, real solid solution. Here's my glasses, and you can see they actually fit right inside there. So another big improvement from V1 to V2. Um, you can actually wear your glasses with these, and um, I watched uh, RC model RC model review and Bruce's review of these, and. Uh, was really glad to see his suggestion, which was, um, you know, if you um, are in a glasses wear and this magnification isn't enough for you, um, you could actually use some reading glasses and perhaps the reading glasses, um, you know, magnification level plus that of the uh, inside um, magnetic, um, sorry, um, magnifying lens uh, would be enough to, um, you know, to give you what you needed as far as the screen goes. But for me personally, uh, that's kind of why I had them set up in this order. So, um, you know, the V1s down on this end um, were pretty good for $30, a good place to start last year. Um, I highly recommend if you're going to, you know, to step into this whole FPV thing now that you check out the V2s over the V1s. So I'm just going to kind of remove these from the equation, which leaves us with the Quantum V2s and uh, goggles like the Predators. Now the Predators are still, um, to this day, it's still a couple hundred dollars to invest. I believe it's $250 for the kit, which does come with, uh, you know, a VTX and does come with um, some of the things you need, a camera and, an and I believe an antenna to start with too, which obviously you'd have to replace because the stock antennas, the rubber duck antennas or whatever you want to refer to them as are, are really, you know, s kind of uh, synonymous with it's not working really well for our hobby. Um, but regardless of that, um, you know, there is obviously quite a bit of, of price difference between the two. And don't forget, you know, you after you buy this, you will need to uh, still buy yourself a receiver, um, you know, an antenna, um, <coughs> a battery, because like kits like this come with a battery, this does not. Um, but that being said, uh, you know, between the video switcher and the addition of the larger field of view space to actually wear your glasses in there and this this sock which actually keeps the whole thing um, you know on top of your head you know much like the the new head play goggles it kind of fits on your head the same way um, I gotta say that for the money this is an extremely good value uh, the screen is of of good enough quality to where you're you know you're gonna be happy with it if, if it works for you and for those just getting into FPV or starting out um, you know, who are afraid to really dive in on something a little bit more expensive. Uh, this is a great way to start and like most people, you know, you're going to use this for a while and maybe you decide to upgrade, you know, get yourself a, a set of fat sharks, a set of sky zones or a set of head plays even. Um, you know, and I'm not sure, again, I haven't reviewed the head plays so I can't really compare the two so this is this review is not for that. Um, if I get the chance to check out a pair, I'll let you guys know. But for me, um, you know, right now I'm just comparing, you know, these two at this point. Um, you know, uh, I think that if you were to graduate from these and and to pass these down to a passenger, I think that would be they would be fantastic for that as well. Or even better yet, find a buddy who who wants to get an FPV when you're ready to to graduate from them and and gift them to them so that they can enjoy what we've come to love so much. So, um, you know, I got to give two thumbs up to Hobby King for you know going and creating a version two that is far superior to their version one offering um, is really has some great things uh, they have you know they really were considerate when it came to the pilot's needs between the VTX slots the holder for the video switcher uh, the slots for adjustment camera mount on top if you choose to go that route 
uh, the lipo um, holder that has an actual um, I love this little cut they put in there to actually run the battery out of that's how I did it the read the battery lead through so that was really great too and and the whole thing realistically um, it is you know is not too bad and uh, I think that you know again for those just getting into the hobby or those looking to try something new with maybe a larger field of view for the price you really can't go wrong with these uh, for me personally I prefer the the goggles for their portability as well but uh, again thank you Hobby King for uh, sending these out for review I think you guys are doing a great job uh, it's been a great uh, addition to the hobby um, since you guys have been around it helped a lot of people get into the hobby for a lot less money uh, which is a great thing so keep on doing what you're doing Hobby King uh, don't be afraid to check out the Quantum V2s if it's something you guys are interested in they're definitely a quality kit and uh, stick around for more reviews coming up soon from Mini Quad Club thanks a lot Hi everybody, Nick Miller here from MiniQuadClub.com and this is my review of the Quantum HD DIY FPV Goggle Kit from Hobby Kitting. Hi everybody, Nick Miller here from Hey everybody, Nick Miller here from